Let's take a look at a DMX cat. I'll zoom in on this because it is a fairly small device, which is good because uh, it is a very important tool used in the entertainment industry for programming, setting up and t uh, testing fixtures in my case, because my job is mainly fixing lights. It's extremely useful to plug this into a light and then access it by my mobile phone. Uh, use the RDM function to get the fixture characteristics and then actually test specific features. So the idea behind this is that this connects to a RDM enabled DMX network. It can just be a plain DMX network. That's a communication protocol used to control theatrical fixtures. And each universe uh, that you of DMX has 512 channels. And that could be literally 512 individual dimmers or LED channels. Or in the case of a moving headlight, it could be anything from, say, three up to, well, the, the three wouldn't actually get you many channels. Let's say the most basic uh, RGB pan and tilt moving light could use, theoretically, five channels. But many will use a large group of channels, uh, some consuming almost a whole universe each. Um, and uh, that gives control over all the different functions in them. Where this comes in is it lets you test that, but it also lets you access uh, setup menus as well. So <clears throat> there's not really much to show without actually plugging this into a light. Uh, so I shall just pop the lid right now and show you what's inside. Oh, externally, it's got the power button, a status indicator light. It's got a flashlight uh, that's enabled by the side button, which is in the software. So that is going to be have other functions probably. And it's also got the micro USB charging port. The uh, It comes with a five pin cable, which is the standard for professional DMX. The, the nightclubs tend to use three pin because it's cheaper connectors, basically. Let me just grab another device. Velcro. It also comes with a device called a gender bender. They don't call it that, but that's its, its name in the industry. It converts the female to a male. Uh, this one is very, very stiff, the one that came with it. I can't get most of the plugs and the job into it. So, uh, not sure. I'll get another one. This one is not very good. Let's pop this open. It comes with the optional um, lanyard and belt clip, which is good because it's the sort of thing that should be clipped onto your belt. Oh, it has other features there that are very handy in the entertainment industry where everything is black, just by nature of uh, blacked out stages. Uh, it has a sounder. If you, basically speaking, if you lose it, you can actually make it identify where it is on the job. So if I take this off, it reveals the circuit board. There's the sounder there. It's quite a loud one. Uh, I'll just pop this off as well. Actually, I'll just unplug the cable here. Let's not damage it because this is a fairly new tool for me. Oh, that is not coming out easily. Right, tell you what, I'll just leave that plugged in then. Um, the circuitry is, well, there's the little Bluetooth transceiver, which it uses to connect to your phone. There's a button. There's another button. Uh, charging port, LED, the light little uh, light guide for transferring the light up to the indicator light. And then the back is mainly a lithium cell. 1,500 milliamp power. My colleagues report that in heavy use, these have lasted well. I'm guessing from these little inductors that these are power supplies. Let's take a closer look at this circuit board. That is the way ahead here. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore the circuit board of the DMX Cat. The first and most notable component is the sounder here. If you lose your DMX Cat, you can send a signal to it and it will make loud peeping noises so you can find it. Um, so here's the USB charge connector. I'm going to guess that it's not a standard number, but I'm going to guess that this is possibly a charge control chip and that these components here are in the same configuration I'd normally expect to find something like a DW01 uh, battery protection chip. The lithium cell takes up the whole back of the PCB and uh, it doesn't look like it's got protection on it, so that would make sense to have separate protection on the board with the dual MOSFET. Uh, we have a button at the side for the, well, I was going to say for the LED here that is used as a flashlight. It's a moment traction flashlight button. But uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to be read in software. So that could be a multifunction button. It could also enable like dual press for a particular function. 
Here's the main button though for turning it on and off, and there, with hot melt glue hold it in place, is a little light guide over the LED. I see a transistor, possibly for that LED, a transistor, possibly for that LED, and a transistor over here, possibly for the sounder. This area of circuitry here looks like a couple of voltage regulators, and it's notable that they've made a little uh, modification afterwards, something that they've just presumably thought would be an enhancement to the, to the design, but they've put a capacitor across that. Not sure what that is. There's another one over there, XB1, and there's also an XB1 over there. there. Are they protection or regulators? Not sure. Uh, looking up XB1 and SOT23, didn't really find much. Um, the DMX circuitry is based around this connector, lots of protection, which is good because it's an external network. And then this um, UM3483 uh, very standard DMX, well, RS485 uh, driver chip, which can either read or uh, write data. Well, it can receive or transmit is the best way to put that. We have two programming ports. One of them is most likely for the U-Blocks uh, Bluetooth module here. And this module has probably about 512 kilobytes of uh, available memory and uh, a good chunk of RAM as well. So it can be programmed with the bulk of the application, but I'm wondering what this is. It's not really obvious what that is, but I'm guessing it does look like it's got a programming port. It could be a another microcontroller, or it could be anything. Maybe a microcontroller that's uh, dealing with the real-time output of DMX and the data stream because I don't know if that would necessarily be optimised for something like that. So they've maybe just added that. It might also be for security, which would make sense as well. There is the 143 uh, source termination resistor. Well, not termination resistor again. It's the source resistor across the output of the uh, the network. You Generally, for a long serial network like RS485, you have a resistor at both ends. When you get to the end of the network, you're supposed to terminate it with a resistor between 100 to 120 ohms. And that's fundamentally it. It's very blocky in the sense it's just building blocks. It's all sensible designs with their fairly standard programming header. Um, I noticed that in their other designs as well which makes sense to use a standard style programming uh, probe. I'd guess it, I don't know if it's actually something that clamps down the circuit board or if you just hold it on in place with the gold pogo pins, the little springy pins against the contacts. But there it is, a rechargeable um, network analysis and light testing and programming device. Uh, now, I'm going to give you a demonstration of the unit in action. One moment, please. So now I've got the DMX cat plugged into one of our lights. This is a BMFL. You can work out what that means yourself. It's made by Roby. Uh, big mofo light, fundamentally. And uh, on the phone, I've got the app, which gives me control over the parameters that are controllable via DMX and RDM. So I've got control over the pan and the tilt. Let's uh, not touch the wrong parts of the screen. Hold on a second. Oh, oh! It says select all. It's it's let me try and select things uh, on the screen and the color wheels. So let's uh, just uh, select some colors. I could actually pan that around a bit. I could tilt it over a bit onto the wall, and then you could actually see what I'm actually doing here. Well, that's uh, halfway through a color wheel. But it basically lets you test all the functions from the phone, and that is the purpose of this tool. It's basically a, a Oh, it also lets you plug into a network, and if I go back the way, if I uh, exit out of here, and I tell that light to advertise what it is, if I select and I hit that, you'll see it do a little uh, I am here routine, it'll jiggle about in the red grid, and it'll show you where it is, just so you can identify which light you're connecting to. It's a very useful tool.